Good morning, Hilton Baptist. It's Friday morning, the 30th of October, and I am coming to you today with a short devotion preview of what we're going to be looking at this Sunday, the 1st of November, at Hilton Baptist Church. We are going to be concluding our series. Uh, We've been looking at lessons from the post-exilic leaders and prophets, those who came back to Jerusalem to rebuild it after the exile, when they were miraculously allowed to come back because of a decree by King Cyrus the Persian. And uh, we've been learning some lessons from them, because as we've come out of lockdown, uh, we've recognized that we've also come back to a different world, and we need to learn some lessons. And there are some interesting lessons to learn from our friends who went back and rebuilt Jerusalem. So we've been looking at some lessons from uh, Ezra and Nehemiah and some of the prophets, Haggai and Malachi. And last week we looked at Zechariah, which was one of the most difficult ones at all, of all because Zechariah is one of the toughest books of the Old Testament. But we learned probably the most important lesson there, that it's actually all about Jesus and the work that the uh, post-exilic people were doing, which was not by might nor by power, but was actually a small thing. If it's done in the Spirit of God, done by the Spirit of God, then it's an important work that can often prepare the way for the greater work that God is going to do later. We've learned other lessons, lessons like dealing with disappointment and um, dealing with opposition. Um, We've also uh, had to deal with the fact that everything was much smaller and less sign- in, more insignificant coming back from Jerusalem. And the temptation was just to get on with your own lives. But the important lesson of prioritizing the ministry of the Lord, building the temple, getting the temple uh, ministry working again, making sure that the priests and Levites had sufficient money to do their work. All of that uh, were important lessons from um, those people that we have learned And and we need to remember to get the work of God going again and make sure that that is a priority to overcome obstacles that come our way because there is probably more and more antagonism towards the work of the Lord than there even was before the lockdown. And also to, to deal with disappointment because sometimes things are much smaller and seemingly less significant uh, after the lockdown and yet to realize that God can do some of his best work and some of his most important work through his people content and certainly not uh, despising the day of small things. And so we've had some wonderful lessons. And the last one is going to be the prophet, uh, the not the prophet, the story of Esther. And this is a, a slightly different story and, and an almost an interesting way to end because unlike all the others, Esther never went back to Jerusalem after the exile. And in fact, the majority of Jews didn't go back. They stayed in Babylon, spread out through the Persian Empire, and Esther and her family actually find themselves in Susa, which was the capital city where the king of Persia uh, performed his tasks and ran his kingdom. And it's a fascinating story. It is a beautiful story. It is one of the most profound stories in the Bible. And I'm told that the Jewish people, it's one of their best known stories because they retell it every year around the festival of Purim, which is at a similar time to our Christmas time. Um, And they remember this story because it was such a wonderful story of how God protected the Jews. One of the more interesting things about the story of Esther is that the name of God never appears in the book. And in fact, the worship of God never appears in the book, not even praying to God. There are times in the book where they fast, but there's never a mention of them fasting and praying, which occurs in just about every book. And so in many ways, Esther uh, describes what it is like to live in a very secular society. Our society is so very secular. So very many of us uh, live most of our lives without any reference to God. Um, And the way life is put together and functions, it could be easy to live with it as if there was no God. Everything is so secular. Everything is about uh, what we can see and hear and feel and taste and touch. Uh, There is no 
reference to spiritual things in our daily lives. And it's quite interesting to remember that that was Esther's world too. And we're going to learn some lessons about how to live in a very secular world, a world where there is no reference to God, where it almost seems like God is not. And one of the things that we're going to discover is that even if you can't see him, even if it looks like he doesn't exist, God is at work. He's at work in the lives of his people. He's at work behind the scenes. And he is at work fulfilling his purposes. You might not be able to see it. It might seem completely invisible. But don't think for a minute that God is not at work. That was true in Esther's day. It is so very true today. And we're going to learn some of those lessons on Sunday. So come and join us. See you then. Bye.